So this is my physics 2111 lab, which is constant velocity. So the purpose of this lab is to observe the motion of an object that's moving at the same direction without changing direction. This is also known as the constant velocity that's moving in the same direction. So in this lab, we're going to observe a glue stick moving across a table, and I will be recording its position at different times. So some of the fundamental physics principle used would be Newton's first law, which indicates an object in motion will stay in uniform motion and an object at rest will stay at rest except when acted upon an external force. So in this lab, we assume that there is zero net force, which means constant velocity. And another fundamental physics principle used would be the momentum principle of the Newton's second law, which is net force equals the change in momentum over the change in time. I'll also be using the velocity update formula derived from the momentum principle, which is final velocity equals initial velocity plus net force over mass times the change in time. I'll also be using the average velocity formula to derive the position update formula, which is final position equals initial position plus the average speed times the change in time. And in this lab, we assume that there are no net forces acting upon the object. So since net force is zero, the velocity formula will actually change where final velocity equals the initial velocity. So in this experiment, I observed a glue stick rolling across the table. To start, I've selected the point at the center of the glue stick as the initial position. And it starts at five centimeters as I want to give it time to accelerate to its constant velocity. As you can see here, the purple line indicates the x-axis. And to the right, it will be in the positive x-axis. I've also went ahead and calibrated the video into 0.3 meters as the initial ruler measurement was in centimeters. As you can see, all these red dots are the center of the glue stick at different time intervals. And with those time intervals, we obtain this position graph. So using the analyze tool from the tracker app, we could actually try to find the slope of the graph, which using the line of best fit. And the reason why we want to find a slope as average velocity or velocity in general is just the derivative of the position function. And as you can see here, we obtained a slope of 0.185, which would be the velocity of this experiment. So here I have the first half of my glow script code. So one of the things that I changed was line 35, which would be the initial x position. And I have to obtain that number from the tractor data, which is at time zero. And another thing that I changed would be the initial velocity, which was using the slope that I got from the tracker data. Um, here it's 0 0.00185 as it's from centimeters to meters. Now moving into my second half of my glow script code, uh, first thing that I changed was line 49, which is my while loop. So I want the while loop to end at um, 1.367 seconds, which is when the time ends on my tracker data. And another thing that I changed would be line 54 which is net force. I've changed net force to zero as in this experiment, we assume that net force would be zero. Looking at line 58, the velocity will not be updating as the velocity is constant in this case. However, we will be updating line 60, which is the position update formula, and it updates by 0 0.00185 meters every second. After running the code, and you can see that we get a position graph that's very, very similar to the one from the tracker data. We also get a velocity graph, which is a horizontal line, which is good as in this case is constant velocity, and that's what we want. I went ahead and already put the data into a spreadsheet. So on the left, we have a tracker data, and on the right, we have the glow script. And after graphing, you can see in the orange line, which is the glow script data, and the blue dots, which is the tracker data. And they're overall very similar with some minor differences. And this differences could be due to possible error. So remember that we assumed that there were no net forces acting upon the object. However, in reality, there were friction air resistant that could affect the motion of the glue stick. And there could also be measuring error where I misclicked the center of the glue stick. So what if the X axis were flipped? Well, the object will be moving in a backward motion. The velocity will still be constant, however, since we are moving backward, the velocity will also be negative, hence a negative linear slope. And as you can see on the right, that's what a position graph will look like. So what does this mean? Is it possible for you to say how many pushes and pulls are added together to give a zero net force in the case that I've observed? No, there are a lot of forces from surrounding that are acting upon the observed system. Several forces such as friction and air resistance occur in the real world making a net force of zero impossible. Well, this is all I have for my lab one constant velocity 